Live from Las Vegas, it's The Q, covering HPE Discover 2017, brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Okay, we're back live here in Las Vegas. This is The Cube's exclusive coverage of HPE Discover 2017. Silicon Angle Meets flagship program. Go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Dave Vellante. Our next two guests, Dennis Dean, Vice President, Global Advisories and System Integrators, Strategic Alliances for Hewlett Packard Enterprises, and, and Mayor Baroff, Vice President of Alliances for HPE. Guys, uh, I mean, you can't talk about a more partner-centric vision with the simplicity of hybrid cloud up on stage today with Meg Whitman, talking about you know, the clean messaging. Again, back on same vector it's always been on, hybrid cloud, IOT, which is all the data, all the infrastructure under the hood. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank so you. what's new? I mean, you got the partner-friendly transformation happening. Right. Give us the update. So, as you know, we've been playing some, some pretty interesting corporate restructuring uh, efforts recently. We had the HP Inc. Uh, spin-off, which essentially created an industry-leading company with PCs and printers. And now what's happened is we've uh, recently just had ES spin merge with CSC, creating DXC. And really what happened in that case is left us with a very, very focused infrastructure portfolio. And a lot of our system integrator and global advisory partners have seen this and gone, hey, you know, there's an opportunity here to really partner well. Our portfolio now is extremely uncomplicated to understand. It's industry leading, it's world class. And with our point next services divisions, we've got some asset centricity now where they can help package into a really nice way for our other system integrator and services partners to take it to market. Right, talk about the impact of how you guys work in the services companies. You mentioned it's pretty clear. Just lay it out real quick. Right, so we've got a concept which we call precision partnering, and really that's differentiating who these partners are. So you start with the global advisories, and that's really going to be the PWCs, the Deloitte's, and the KPMG's, right? They're off on pre-RFP, they're up there consulting very large clients even before they know that they're going to transform. Further, as you move into the system integration space, you go into Accenture, you go into Capgemini, and very, very quickly you start finding yourself in the traditional space where DXC now plays, which is in the service provider outsourcer world. So that's where you have Tata Consulting, you have Wipro, Infosys, Cognizant, HCL, and Tech Mahindra. So classic swim lanes kind of situation. Absolutely. So what's the, what's the uh, customer impact of this? I mean, as they are looking at solutions, what is, how does it impact the customer engagement for you guys? So I think it's pretty clear, nobody can go this alone. And I think that's become even more evident with the technology that we have out there today. It's an ecosystem play from soup to nuts. The other thing we've done in the company is we've established these industry verticals. Well, the industry verticals, guess what? These system integrators have been at it for several decades. Yeah. So we've just started this journey now. We want to make our, our products and our services very much in line with what the workflows are from those industries. And who better to help us than these system integrated partners? So Mayer, what are you seeing in terms of some of the early action with these, these relatively new, I mean, they've always had some kind of relationship with you guys. Uh, how has that changed and, and where are you seeing the heat spots? Yeah. First of all, great to be back at theCUBE. <laughs> and I do want to make an emphatic statement that the India Global System Integrators are going to be the growth engine for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I believe it. Yeah. We're going to hold it to you. Yeah, you can hold me to it. Absolutely. Yeah. We got a cranking. Yeah. 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 So we've seen great traction with the India Heritage Global System Integrators. Uh, what we've been doing over the last year is actually a lot of co-innovation with these system integrators. Obviously with the enterprise services business now spun off as DXC, all of these system integrators previously had some perceived conflict of interest because of our own services arm, and they don't see that anymore. So HPE becomes a very valuable company to partner with. Uh, they recognize that partnership is in our DNA. Uh, we've been great partners uh, ever since the company got founded by Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard. And the real ethos of this company is partnership first. You have heard Meg say it, it's part of the core values of Hewlett Packard Enterprise, which is partnership first. So HPE is a very, very valuable and attractive partner proposition for these companies. And what we have done on the innovation side is actually a lot of business model innovation. Uh, you heard the CEO of Wipro who was on stage recently and he spoke about what we are doing with flexible capacity services, mm -hmm. which is really offering a pay-per-use model. So again, uh, we couldn't be in a better spot in HPE, Dennis and myself in the Strategic Alliances organization, and we're really excited about well, it. Well, I love what he said uh, about we either eliminate it, we hyper-automate it, mm -hmm. if we can't hyper-automate it, then we agile it. Agile it. And it was a very aggressive <laughs> yeah. sort of stance. Mm -hmm. uh, and he talked about retraining, I think 61,000 61,000, yeah. yep. I mean, massive numbers that we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so your, your prediction is 
is maybe hold some water. You know? It does hold some water. I mean, we're very excited about where these partners are and the potential they hold for us. Uh, I keep telling our leadership team, I really believe we're at the tip of the iceberg where these partners are concerned. Uh, you take somebody like a Tata Consulting Services, they are $18 billion in terms of revenue, 300,000 employees all over the world, yeah. and uh, I think they just hold a huge value proposition. And just to add on to what Dennis was saying on the precision partnering line, what we've really done now is we've identified where each of these partners have core strengths by industry vertical. Mm -hmm. So for example, I know that in the financial services industry, a Tata Consulting Services and Infosys are very strong. Uh, we know somebody like a Wipro is very strong in the oil and gas industry. Mm -hmm. We know somebody like a Tech Mahindra is very strong in the telecommunication space. Mm -hmm. So rather than spreading ourselves thin and trying to do everything with everybody, mm -hmm. we're really choosing specific industry verticals to partner with each of these global system integrators. This is the swim lanes we were talking about. And this yeah. is interesting. And talk about the dynamics, this is because the specialism of of, of knowing the areas right. are important because you have data, mm -hmm. uh, there's applications, but also you have the horizontally scalable, you know, multi-cloud market right yeah. there, which is the, you know, going to be ultimately the the end game here. Mm -hmm. As hybrid cloud starts to grow, yeah. you're going to have multiple clouds, right. multiple use cases, multiple industries. Mm -hmm. So you want that horizontally scalable, yet the specialism. We do. I think, you know, rather than call it swim lanes, because at the end of the day, these partners are enormous. They bring an enormous scale to us as well. As <laughs> Canals. <laughs> Canals. And I'd say, you know, ring fencing is almost, you know, a way to go about it. And in some cases, they do compete, right? And in some yeah. cases, you know, even our services will overlap a little. So what we're trying to do with it is call out where the complementarity lies, agree on a set of accounts and a set of industries in a specific geography, and even with a value proposition that we can go to town with. Whether that be hybrid IT with Deloitte, or network as a service with Accenture, going down into flexible capacity services with Wipro. And what's emerged is, if you look at our portfolio, you kind of heat map which partner's playing where with us, and that's by design. We don't want to say anything's exclusive. Every partner can work with us, and we will absolutely go to market with them. At the end of the day, they have their own install base, right? We'd love to be part of that. And what they see from us is we bring the innovation, which helps them be more compelling and more competitive to position their services. Well, the customer wins at the end, too. I mean, exactly. to the point about the, the swim lanes and the canals, it's a huge opportunity, because, but each one has their own DNA as a culture, right? Some are, you know, I mean, PwC, for instance, they do their thing, and, yeah. and everyone does their thing. But the customer is simplified. I mean, to yeah. the customer, it's not the confusing, who am I talking to? I mean, is that one of the main things you see? It is, so there's two things we see. The first thing is that the customers are a lot more savvy. Okay, they know exactly what they're looking for. You know, the CIO is no longer some irk in the back office with IT. They're now part of the lines of business. They're talking directly to the CEO. In most cases, the IT is entrenched so much in these different customer bases that they have a very precise notion of what they're looking for, and it's supposed to be outcome-based and solutions. What does that mean? Complexity. This is not about product pushing, it's about solution, selling solutions. And I think what we see with the partners is that in every single major engagement we have, it's an ecosystem play. You may have a PwC, like you said before, at the advisory level. You might come in then with Accenture doing some system integration, and guess what? Infosys runs the whole back end. So that's a very common occurrence these days, where you have multiple partners in the same customer base. We have to be smart about how we engage each one and keep it as a very structured approach for Mr. Customer. I mean, that was the thing that Dave and I always talk about, and it's been more amplified this market that we're in now, is with open source and all the greatness that's happening, coexistence has always been an ecosystem game, and you, know, you throw a few wolves in there, and next thing you know, things are starting to you know, grow, as that example we were talking about with the, you know, how things are growing and, and balancing. So there is a coexistence. Mm -hmm. um, but, but talk about examples. I would like to get some specifics, if you can share some use cases of what you guys are doing with partners, just to kind of put an exclamation point on the new mm -hmm. post-spin merge engagement. Give us some examples of yeah. the ecosystem. You mentioned a few within, you know, doing the back end thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just going back to this coexistence, so we were just with the CEO of Wipro, and he was telling us that he was with the CIO of a major oil and gas company, and the CIO tells him, listen, I partner very well with HPE, I partner well with Microsoft, I partner well with GE, but maybe there's an opportunity to form a consortium of sorts and all of you come together and talk to me instead of me talking to all of you independently. <laughs> so I think that's also reflective of the maturity in the marketplace where increasingly I think both customers and partners now are very conscious that one company can't do it all and that all of us have to coexist in this particular space. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an example Mayor, of Mayor, talk about the, the, where that was just a few years ago. I mean, this is a new dynamic, or, yeah. or how new is it? I mean, that, that conversation seems to be typical now. It's Not typical, just force bidding, hey, just get along and play well. Yeah. It's actually table stakes. I mean, right, I mean, it's table stakes, yeah. And I think increasingly both customers and partners are realizing that each of us bring very complementary offerings to the table. 
So all of our customers and partners, the feedback they've given on some of our recent acquisitions, for example, Simplivity, Nimble, SGI, they see it as a very complementary acquisition to the services that they offer. So when I talk to Wipro in the oil and gas segment and they say, we want high performance compute, and now that we have SGI as an acquisition, they see it as very complementary. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where it's, it's an excellent dovetail between what we offer and what the partners need to serve the end customers. And customers across board today, they're talking about digital and digital transformation. So I think that's where the power of HP and the partner comes together. I mean, Dennis, this is the portfolio benefit. I mean, yes, ultimately, right. the bigger the portfolio, the better the fit for those kinds of conversations. You know, and it's even more so than that, because again, you, you look at our portfolio, it starts looking pretty extensive. You know, we now have a series of very interesting acquisitions which start to fit beautifully in our framework, but you got to stitch it all together. Nobody's going to buy a single server standing on its own. They need the connectivity to go with it. Then you have to start looking at what kind of compute workloads do you need? And which cloud do you want? Oh, you want both of them. And then that's probably got an ecosystem play with someone like a GE Predix, for example. So we've got a lot of triangulation that then starts happening with our ISV partnerships. So out with Microsoft, you know, out with some of the Docker, some of the mesospheres. So what ends up happening is you end up with a beautiful set of raw ingredients, but who's going to mix the salad, make it look beautiful and serve it up to Mr. Customer at the right price point. And I think that's where we've seen a lot of innovation come from our HP Financial Services to underpin that yeah. traditional CapEx model and deliver it on an OPEX basis for consumption selling. And guess what these partners love more than anything? OPEX-based, services-led. That's yeah. what they're all about. Good gross profit, but also the point that we don't get to because it's, it's an HPE show. You have competition and your customers are all, have bought, have potentially competition in there, Absolutely. whether it's Dell, EMC, or other things happening the partner model works because now that's their mix in the salad and you know, the good stuff, new stuff comes in and the better stuff will always win in that It model. does. So how are you evaluating success? I mean obviously revenue and, and EBITDA, what other things are you looking at to determine that you're getting a return on the activities with the partners? Then you can sort of prioritize where to spend your time. That's a great question. So we actually talked about that in our, now, yeah. in, in with Peter Ryan, our, our global uh, sales chief, and we were talking about what is not only success criteria, but what does good look like? And I think what it comes down to is, this is a partner model, right? We have to have a lot of trust with each other. We actually have to look at each other in the eye and say, I'm going to work with you on this customer, I'm going to stick with you, I'm not going to go running off to the competition. So it starts with trust. The second point is, what is that differentiated value that they bring? We actually have to go and deliver together. If one fails, the other one's going down. So that at the end of the day, when we look at the complementary nature of how we go to market together, it has to be because we're market leading in a similar space together. So they bring the industry differentiation, they bring a services mix, they bring an advisory capability that we don't have. What we do is we bring world-class infrastructure, mixing it all together, that's tough stuff right behind the scenes. And guess what? When you're out in front of the customer and he says, you know, I love this stuff, I like it at a certain price point, you both have to take a bit of a bath sometimes to make that deal stick and certainly lock the customer in for a future-proof roadmap. And I think that's where we get down to enablement. They have to understand our portfolio. We are on the hook to enable them, to invest in them, to give them resources which are sometimes on-site, on-premise, on their staff even, who think about HPE every day. And it's not just today, yeah. it's what's happening next year and the roadmap that evolves from there. So there's a lot of tightness that expands. And people say, oh, look at HP, you know, you guys are getting smaller. As far as we can tell, we're getting a lot bigger. We have a lot more conversations. Across the partners we named, it's 2.5 million employees. Yeah in those partners. That's how we look at it today. It's an ecosystem play, not just one company. Yeah, yeah. ecosystem is a great point. I mean, Mayor, you talked about the India growth opportunity. That also brings up the global question. Yeah. So one of the themes here this year, and obviously what's different from this last year and this year is obviously the structural changes and the simplicity on the messaging and the organizational engagement, but the simplicity of execution. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talk about how you guys are going to make it simpler for the customer yeah. to span the geos of global uh, <laughs> execution. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not of, easy. Yeah, no, it's not easy. So one of the areas which we are focusing on in the avatar of the new Hewlett Packard Enterprise is really ease of doing business. So with the India Global System Integrators, the approach we have taken is how can we make it very easy for you to do business with us, thereby serving your end customer. So right now we have launched on several business process re-engineering within our internal process so that we are very attractive for the partners and customers to work with us. And that's a project that we have just launched under the overall tag of ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, final word on uh, this segment. Just in general, obviously very partner-friendly mess. We heard that simplicity, hybrid cloud, no brainer on that relative to the, to the transformation. Business transformation is really where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on business transformation and what's happening at the show here. What's the, share with the audience your thoughts on, on 
that those two things. So I think the proximity to the lines of business, what we're actually doing now is we're no longer selling into a black box and saying, we hope this works for you, Mr. Customer. We're putting skin in the game, not only by financing the equipment and, and we're actually taking risk. And what we're saying to some customers is we're saying we're going to do this outcome based. In fact, in some cases, and we have a beautiful actual uh, case study in the public sector up in Canada, where we actually only get paid as the customer makes money. If you look at some of our showcases, which we've done even in Santa Clara with the Aruba enablement of the stadium, the 49er stadium, you think about the business value that happened there. We monetized the game. So the Aruba Wi-Fi enablement, that was just a point play. Yeah. What actually ended up happening is the entire stadium makes more money yeah. as a result of this geolocation where you can order food, have it delivered directly to your seat, and not miss a single second watching the game as you eat. <laughs> and that's a great use case. That's a business outcome that has nothing to do with serving wireless to people as a speeds and feeds. It's right. basically an enablement for an entirely different experience. And it's a language we have to learn to talk, right? I think, again, that's where we fall back very heavily on our advisory partners. I mean, if you look at the language that Accenture uses, KPMG uses, Deloitte uses, I mean, they speak this language every single day. They're in the C-level boards. They're having these conversations before we even get involved. And I think that's a huge value there. Final, final question. I know we've got to wrap, get in the, get in the sign, but Low-hanging fruit in terms of industries. You mentioned, obviously, media and entertainment, that's the sports. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned manufacturing, retail. Are these the low-hanging fruit? What are the low-hanging fruit areas that are ripe right now for you know, business transformation? Yeah, we have spoken about industries, but I think the biggest low-hanging fruit for Hewlett Packard Enterprise as a horizontal is across the IoT space. Mm -hmm. Each one of our partners has an IoT strategy in very niche areas, and I think Hewlett Packard Enterprise is just beautifully positioned right now to take leverage of what's happening in the IoT space. And again, final words from my side is that the India Global System Integrators <laughs> is going to be the growth engine for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now you are, we're going to hold it to you. <laughs> Dennis yeah. Mayor, thank you for joining thank us you. on theCUBE here. Partner update there, partner friendly, clear lines of engagement. It's a great opportunity, IoT. It's theCUBE bringing you a lot of internet of things with video. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Stay with us more for live coverage of our three days of exclusive HPE Discover 2017. Stay with us after this short break.